So a few weeks ago, we went pheasant hunting, and rather than breasting out one of my pheasant, I decided I was gonna keep the whole thing to try and experiment. I've done it with chickens in the past, and I thought it would be good with pheasant. And that is a beer can chicken pheasant, in this case, pheasant. Now we'll kind of go through what I got here. So obviously, I've got my pheasant. We're gonna clean up some of that fat and feathers that are still on there. And then I've got my gloves here to put on just so I don't have to get all gummy and gross and bloody. And we've also got our Rufus T. Kansas City Gold, which I'll explain the purpose behind that as far as flavor and purpose, because this has like a, there's a reason I'm using this sauce. And as far as our beer goes, we're gonna use Bell's Two Hearted. So the idea behind the beer can chicken putting the beer in the chicken is it will help keep the meat moist and hopefully using the two hearted it will release some of the flavors and aromas from the beer into the pheasant. I believe two hearted is made with grapefruit and that's one of the main ingredients or flavors in the beer. So hopefully that will come through and you'll be able to taste some of that in the pheasant. I've of course got our knife. I've got a, some water here in my lovely wilderness athlete bottle that we're gonna fill this bowl up so we can rinse our hands off and whatnot. And then we've got our Rectech smoker right here, this beautiful thing. The cool thing about this is it has the probes built into it. So you can see the temperature of your meat on the little screen there. And it also connects to your phone so I can check it from inside or actually I can check it from anywhere as long as this is connected to Wi-Fi, so that's great. So I'm gonna spend a few minutes cleaning this up more thoroughly, and then we'll get to it. Really common mistake people make when they're cleaning wild game. They're kind of doing a hack job. They're leaving the meat out in the warmth for a while, or they're not cleaning their birds right away, or like say for deer, you go and get your pictures first, and if, if it's not real cold out and the guts are still in that animal, it's gonna retain a lot of that heat and really, really change the flavor of the meat once it gets to your plate. So this bowl I have here has warm water in it, so that way when I'm pulling off these pieces of fat, I can dip my fingers in the warm water and it will just come right off. It makes the process a lot quicker and easier. Another tip it, I learned from a butcher is if you hold your knife kind of like a pencil, you can really get into spots a lot easier than if you held it by the handle and gouge around. And the pencil method just makes for a little bit cleaner process too. Giant chunk of fat. Like I said, I can even see the oil from the fat starting to come to the surface in this bowl of water. And really, if you're feeding wild game to someone who's never had it before, it's your job to prepare that meat as good as possible because if you prepared that meat in a way that wasn't the best and you give it to someone who's never had wild game before, they're gonna taste those flavors a lot more than you normally do because you're used to it and it can completely turn them off from the idea of wild game. walking by watching this. You can just see their eyes get wide. There's a bloody mess all, in, all over in front of me. The hardest part of birds is always this back area. I don't really have a good method for getting this fat off the tail area. So if anyone has any tips or tricks on how to do that, I'd love to know, because I have not been able to figure this one out. A lot of that fat's off few more feathers, the feathers should come off in the sink. I couldn't quite get that. That's on the back lower part of the bird, so I'm hoping that any of those oils will just kind of flow down and drip out and not cook into the meat, so we'll see though. All right, so we got our pheasant cleaned up here. There's still little bits of fat here and there, but I'm not gonna be too, too, too crazy about it because I think I'm gonna be the only one eating this unless Kyle wants to try it. But the breasts look really, really good, and that's what I'm excited about. But anyhow, next step is preheating this thing. So what we're gonna do is power it on. 
So we're gonna set our grill to about 245, open the lid so it can get a little bit of oxygen, and then we're gonna move back over here, and this is where our Rufus Teague comes into play. A little trick of the trade is when there's no skin on your bird, like this one, there's no skin, so there's nothing to really seal in that flavor and that moisture, what you're gonna do is you can do this with mustard too, but why not add a little bit better flavor than that? Take your sauce and you coat the whole outside of it. Then what happens on the grill is the grill will cook around that and kind of make, make its own saucy skin around it. So you get like the combo flavor with skin type texture. It worked really well when I did the beer can chicken. I'm gonna hope it did, does really well with the pheasant. So let's start, let's use this and start coating this thing up. All right, might wanna roll up your sleeves for this one. Just wanna really lather it up. All right, here we go. We got a nice good coating of the Kansas City Gold. Next step is to get your beer. Open that guy up and then you're gonna turn this little pheasant into a puppet, set him down on top. It takes a little coordination, you don't wanna spill the beer. I made the mistake of spilling the beer like 700 times with the chicken. All right, and then this is where our twine comes into play. Grab a good amount of twine, then you'll wanna tie these legs up so it kinda of seals everything together. All right, here we go. Beer can pheasant with Kansas City Gold and Two Hearted Ale. It's tied up pretty good. Um, you want to be super careful set where you set this on the grill. Maybe even grab like a plate or something that you're okay with being in the grill to hold it up because the beer cans on the grill top just tip over super easy. All right. There we go, a nice coating. I'm a little nervous that we're gonna get a lot of spillage out of there just because a pheasant's a lot smaller than a chicken. But like I said, it's an experiment. We'll see how it goes. I'm gonna stick uh, one of these probes in the, let's do one in the breast. Hopefully I can do this without spilling. All right. We're set at 245. We're gonna leave this to go for about an hour. And then after that hour, we're gonna crank it up to about 345 and go for another hour-ish and see what the temperature's at. And we'll go from there. All right, it's been about 30 minutes. We're holding tight at 245. Check on it, make sure it didn't tip over. All right. There we go. So a little more of this Rufus Teague in this bowl here. Hopefully I can do this one-handed. Put another coat on this guy just to keep that, for the lack of a better term, artificial skin. So I think that this is gonna be the technique to keep this sauce skin nice and thick is just occasionally come out here and give it another coating. All right, we'll close it back up and check on it in a little bit. All right, timer's up. It's been one hour. Looks like our internal temperature for the probe that's in the breast is 121. And we're looking for a temperature of 165. All right. So she's looking good, nice and golden. But now we're gonna close this up, raise the temperature to for chicken, it's 245. The pheasants are a little bit smaller, so maybe we'll stick around the 330, 335 mark. I'm gonna keep an eye, a little bit closer eye on the temperature because I don't wanna start drying this meat out. Our timer isn't done yet, but I was just out here checking it and we are way over. We're at 175, so it's time to take this boy off. Ooh. We're gonna use this other probe, the fresh probe, to probe a few other places just to make sure. 
All right, it looks like the thigh is topping out at 142. I definitely want to get those to temperature, so we're going to let it go for a little bit longer. All right, checking back in and our, all right, so our probe that has been put in the thigh is at 159. I'm getting a little worried about the breasts getting dried out, so I'm gonna pull it anyway and let it set. Hopefully the thighs will do the rest of the cooking with the extra heat it has, but the, the breasts are for sure good. So here we go. This is dangerous. Oh no. Oh no. I gotta grab some tongs. Hopefully this can just slides right out. I'm gonna bring it into Kyle and we're both gonna taste test it. Just kidding. Daddy's got a surprise. Dang. It looks pretty good. It looks great. It'd be so funny if it did the Griswold thing where it was. <laughs> well, here's I, the heart. I actually might need your help cutting some of this. It looks like white meat chicken, kind of. Can I take the first bite? Yeah. It tastes, I mean, it tastes like chicken. <laughs> Try a piece with the skin. That's what I'm trying to get right now. All right. Big old walloping bite there. Smoky, still moist. Good job, man. All right, here's my bite. Definitely, whoa, really smoky. If I could do it a second time, I'd put more of the Rufus Teague sauce on, or maybe just dip it in that as it sits now, because it just needs a little bit more. I think like one minute before you take it off, put the sauce on, like so there's like a fresh glaze, I think would be the way to do it. Yeah. I want to get into that leg. I mean, I'm, I'm nervous of the leg. No, I think it's going to be great. I'm, I'm nervous because of temperature. It oh. took forever. Like the breast got oh, to... Ner oh, nervous like it's not done? Yeah. It took... It like, I never saw it get to 160. It's there. What could happen? You can do it. Yeah. You can go for it. I'll do it. <laughs> Drumstick. Good I'm going to go from the side that looks more done. That's better. Really? Mm -hmm. Way better. Is it mm -hmm. dry? No, moist? No, it's way more moist. When I get salmonella, I don't want to do it alone. And this way, you can join me. Oh, way better. Way better. It's almost like you did, you sauce that one right. Hmm. Yeah, you get, get behind that. There's like some definitely like more tendons and joints and stuff going on in there. Like a wild turkey is different than a yeah. farm race bird, but I get in on that. Huh. It's very sweet, the outside. You can, I think you just sauced it better, maybe. I wonder if the overflow from the beer, the way it was tied up, landed on the legs. Could be. Wait, it, that's far more moist than the breast is. For what it's worth, you can see from our mistakes or what we did good, bad, I would be super careful of those breasts. They're a little drier than I would like, and chicken seemingly holds its moisture a little better than that is. Um, Go thicker on the sauce. Add more layer of sauce more often than I did. And like Kyle said, add a layer a few minutes before you're about to take it off. Um, and watch your temperature super, super closely. It was tough to keep the breasts and the thighs and everything around the same temperature. So for what it's worth, hopefully this helps you. And thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week.